I decided to try my hand at vending at a local card show. I got a table and I'm going to tell you guys what I did good, what I did bad. So that way, hopefully you guys can learn from it. And if you guys are interested in possibly vending at a convention or a local card show or, or whatever it may be, that you guys will have a leg up because you'll have uh, learned from my mistakes. So we're just going to jump straight into it. Um, starting off that this was a pretty, it was a local-ish card show. I did have to drive um, quite a bit. It was about an hour away from me, but it was still pr fairly local. So um, I did have to drive quite a bit. Um, the tables were 50 bucks per table. Um, originally they were 60, but they actually sold out of the main area and there was like an auxiliary area and that's where I ended up. And so the table was a little cheaper. It was only 50 and the foot traffic wasn't quite as good. So I would say the first thing would be, um, if you're thinking about doing it or serious is to book early because that was a mistake. Um, the main room had much more foot traffic and that's where like all the, you know, all the people who had booked initially were, and they had some pretty nice booths in there. So, um, that was probably my first mistake, but it wasn't horrible there. We got decent traffic in there, but it just, it seemed like people didn't know, um, necessarily that there was another room, um, of vendors in there. So, um, you know, that is a little bit unfortunate. One of the good things that I did, but is completely not necessary is I had a sign made, um, and I was able to hang it like back above the booth. And that was really nice because it, for a few things. Um, one, I put on there that I was doing buy, I was buying, selling, and trading. Um, and I got a lot of people that I saw their eyes go up to the sign and they asked if I was interested in buying. And right off the bat, um, buying was probably the most fun part for me. And that's where I saw the most potential. And if you guys have seen any of the vendor POVs, Bulba store pack battle. Um, it is true. That is where the power is because I told that I told people straight up. I said that, um, you know, before I looked at anything, I said, I can take a look at anything that you have, but I'm probably going to be around 70% of comps, um, plus or minus, depending if you have something really good, I can probably go above 70. And you know, if something I'm not really interested, I'd be closer to 60. So I, I told people that up front and, uh, that didn't really scare anyone away. So, um, they were, they were good with that, which was nice. So I was able to buy, I picked up some alt arts, some SIRs, um, at 70% of comps. So, um, and some of them are gradable copies, which was kind of cool. So I might be grading some of those. And then if I want to sell them, even if I want to sell them on eBay, um, since I bought at 70%, I'm still going to be able to make about 15%. So, um, assuming that they don't go up in value. So that was very interesting. And that was um, kind of a pleasant surprise. I wasn't sure how much of that I would encounter. Um, now related to that, um, probably one of the best things you can do is bring cash. And I'm talking like, well, depending on how much I brought more than I was comfortable, like spending, I ended up bringing around a 1000. But I w wasn't really planning on buying heavy. But in case something crazy like came across the table, um, but in that thousand, I had a lot of ones and fives, very important for giving change. So, um, keep that in mind as well. Um, also for the, uh, signage, I want to double back to that. Um, I had signs for little signs that I had printed out showing I was taking Venmo, PayPal, um, stuff like that, little signs that I had put on the table just to kind of help guide people. And that was, um, that was beneficial as well. Uh, probably one of the best things that I did, if maybe, maybe even the best. Um, and I was very lucky that my wife was able to go was bring a second person. Now there's many reasons why you would want a second person, but this card show was 10 AM to 5 PM. And we got there at 9 AM to set up because I didn't know how long it was going to take to set up and I wanted in traffic and whatever. So we were there from 9 a.m. and we actually ended up leaving a little early because the show did kind of die out um, towards the end. So we didn't stay the full entire time, but we were there most of the time. So um, bringing a second person just so you can like go to the bathroom. Um, so um, she could watch the table and I could go around and look at other tables and stuff. 
very very beneficial um so yeah that that was honestly uh and she was able to get us some food because yeah it was a long day so bringing somebody that can help you out is huge um one thing also that helped me a lot was i priced out everything the night before um like 80 percent it was like most of what i was going to have in my case and then i brought some stuff that was like well if i sell out of whatever's in my cases then i can price these and put these in um and that was very helpful having things priced out beforehand uh you can waste a lot of time if somebody asks about something having to check look up comps um i will say this that people um don't want to at least at this show and i've i've been to other bigger shows um as not a vendor you know just as a as a buyer um and people don't want to spend above comps at all right so you have to know this um and they're going to check your prices a lot of the time uh, a lot of times i saw people looking and they would pull out their phones and check um so it's almost pointless if you're not willing to be at least at recent comps um so keep that in mind as well. That can be, there was some stuff I didn't bring because, you know, I wasn't willing to sell at comps because it's just either it's, you know, I, I just want to keep it in my collection or uh, something I bought that I'm hoping will um, improve in value. So I didn't even bring some stuff like that. So, you know, that was kind of it. Um, I touched on the buying power, 70%. Um We'll touch on a few bad things. So probably my biggest blunder, because um, I had all this set up and I had um, I calculated out like the table space, so I knew how much my my cases that I brought, everything that was gonna take up space. I decided, well, and it was a ton of work. I decided to not bring any raw cards, which was my biggest mistake. And if you've ever been to a card show, and then I knew this. I just thought I would have done better on the, the graded because me personally, I love graded cards, but I didn't bring raw cards. I didn't bring a dollar box or and or binders. Um, so that, and there was tables next to me, one to the left and one, you know, a few down that they only had raw cards and they were, they were moving some cards. Now, one guy was selling quite a bit below comps and that's kind of why, but the other table was at comps and they had a they had a very very good selection alt arts sirs like vintage modern like everything and they were doing pretty well and they were very busy and i knew that this was going to be um somewhat of an issue but i you know i kind of i really just dropped the ball on that like if you don't have um bra cards you're probably not going to do too well you need to at least have that, especially the binders. People love looking through the binders. Um, so if you can have like a dollar box, maybe like a $3 box, $5 box, whatever, and then have them um, all priced out. I use those little um, stickers, those little like round color-coded stickers. So you can just color code things if you want. Um, I would greatly, greatly recommend doing that. And if you don't have that, then um, you're, you might be a little disappointed um, in, the, in what you sell. So... Um, another thing that I did poorly was I, um, brought a lot of these 3d printed stands because I was mostly selling graded. Um, I sell these a lot on eBay and Etsy. These uh, are four way stands and then you can take them and they stack. So you can stack like eight and you can make like little towers and stuff. I sell quite a bit of those online and I thought there was a super cool. So I had like display, um, rotators, that were displaying them and it was very clearly marked how much they were and everything um, but those pretty much were a dud and that took up my table space for the that's why part of why i didn't do the raw and the binder um so on like i just kind of screwed myself by i committed to something that uh didn't sell and that's mostly my fault but not entirely because like i said they sell a lot on ebay and etsy so i thought people would be interested but you know it just it didn't go the uh, the way that I had planned. Um, next up, uh, something that you'll need to prepare yourself for is um, how to handle kids, because there was quite a few kids who uh, wanted to sell or trade um, with kind of you know garbage cards or garbage binders, 
and I would never say that to them. Um, so obviously I would never, um, I would never talk down to them or anything. I tried to be very, uh, encouraging and I kind of, you kind of try and pump them up a little, be like, Oh wow, these are some really nice cards. And then if there is something you're interested in, you know, I kind of just said, Oh, I'm not really interested in this right now. Um, but thank you for showing me, you know, I really like, that's a nice collection or whatever the case may be. And I actually did make a few trades with, um, I made one trade actually, uh, yeah, only one trade, but it was it was a great interaction with the kid, and I told him I was very straightforward about, hey, this is how much this card's worth. This is what it sold last for. I'm going to be at seventy percent if you want to if you want um, me to buy it from you, or I can give you a little bit more. I think I did eighty percent for a trade, and uh, he was very happy to do that. And so I tried to be um, transparent. Also, something that I tried to uh, be very aware of for the kids is if their parents were there uh you don't want to be looking like you're taking advantage of kids um the kid that did the trade i could i didn't see a parental figure anywhere um a lot of the times they did have the kids that uh i sold uh, bought some cards from some kids and the father was there and i made sure i would tell the kid and and then also tell him like you're good with this and he would say okay right so um that is very important um i think and just to be uh, aware of that beforehand, um, yeah, because that can be it can be a little weird. Um, you don't want to be taking advantage of kids, um, so yeah, know know how to handle them, um, know how to let them down a little easy, um, I think. But there are uh, also too, you got to be. There's some devious little kids out there. They know their stuff these days. So uh, there was one guy, this one kid, just trying to get me to uh, trade. And he had a really messed... Anyways, he I could see the smile on his face. He was trying to dupe me, but he wasn't going to get me. Um, speaking of that, that brings into another thing of don't be afraid to say no to something. Um, because uh, the pressure... And you're spending this money, right, to get this booth. And then someone comes along and you're either for buy or sell, whatever, right? Don't um, compromise too much on your prices. I would say stand firm. Um, there was a few things that came my way, and I just told them honestly. Like, I was, I almost bit on it a few times. Um, a guy had some UPCs, some 151 UPCs that he was trying to sell, sealed, and I wasn't really looking to buy them right now. But his price wasn't horrible, but it just wasn't great. And I almost was like, well, it, 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 it's not a bad purchase. I, I, I could pick these up. And, but then I caught myself and, um, and I just said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to pass. Like, thank you for showing them to me. I hope you understand. And people were very understanding. So, um, you know, that is that, uh, um, one other thing that I did well for me personally was I had this little, uh, it's kind of like a fanny pack thing. You can wear it. Like people wear it a lot, like on their chest or on your waist, however you want to wear it. Um, I like that for having my cash, uh, close to me. I didn't, I didn't want to, well, one, you don't want to be dealing with a wallet having a lot of money. And I liked, I could just unzip it, blah, 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 you know, take out the, take out whatever change they needed. Um, so that's just like a little thing that, um, little security. Um, I wasn't really, I wasn't worried about theft or anything, but it's always just in the back of my mind. We never left the table unattended either just because, um, it's, it's just not worth tempting people like that. So, um, the other thing that I did very well, which was not necessary in any way, is uh, I got some display cases. Now these are ones that you can hang on your wall. I'll put a I'll put a video of them up. So they're uh, over here um, in my office here. So they kind of do a two for one. Well, I can take them to a show and I can use them. Um, they do lock. They're not like the, the key isn't like a special key. Um, I think you can just unlock it with like a screwdriver even, but um, they do lock. And they're great for hanging on your wall. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just get these cases and uh, I'll have some more display space in my office. And, you know, then I'll have something for the table. Um, so that uh, was really nice. It looked it looked really good. It looked like I had vended before. Uh, a lot of people asked me, um, oh, how many, how many shows do you do uh, a year? Or, you know, what shows do you normally do? And I was like, it's my first one. So um, it looked the part. Um, so I, I always say you got to fake it till you make it. So um, having that was uh, nice and it was peace of mind. All the bigger cards, the expensive cards were in there and it was, um, you know, I, I didn't actually ever lock it, but it was latched. 
So I wasn't worried about anything. Um, the other thing that a lot of people do that I found beneficial just to track things is take photos of the sales. So after every sale, I would say, oh, okay, hold on real quick. Let me just uh, take a photo of this with the money. I'd put the money in the card or whatever it was or the trade. Take a picture so I could remember because it was very important to note one, know how much you've bought or sold. And two, some of my cards were listed on eBay. And I was forgetting to take them off of eBay after I made a sale, but I was able to go back through my photos and be like, oh, shoot, <laughs> I definitely need to take that um, take that down. Uh, also, something that I thought was beneficial, was small, was to bring a tablecloth because the tables that were provided were uh, a little grungy. And, you know, not that you can't have your cards just out on a grungy table, but... I just thought it looked a little bit better to have a tablecloth covering it up. So um, that would be just another thing if you if you have a tablecloth that you can, uh, you know, use, bring, borrow, whatever. Um, very beneficial. Um, I think I already touched on this. But, uh, yeah, I said don't be desperate, but you need to know how to negotiate. And most of that can be found from watching some of those vendor videos. Like I mentioned, the uh, Bulbastore pack battle. There's tons of them. Um, those are obviously, Bubble Store is one of the, the biggest ones, and uh, he's pretty good. Um, also, um, for sports, on the sports side, Card Collector 2, he does a lot of uh, buying and selling. He also, the way he handles kids is really great. Uh, he's always very kind to them and always takes time to look at what they have. And anyways, I learned a lot from watching all of those people, so I kind of knew how to uh, approach the approach the uh, negotiating of everything so I, I wasn't ever caught off guard by anything and I was I was that was probably for my first time I did very well in that aspect so I, I do want to give myself credit for that um, yeah that is mostly it I did want to address one thing uh, I did intend on making this into like an actual vendor POV video um, but if I'm being completely honest um, I do kind of have a I suffer from a lot of social anxiety so just I almost on the drive there I almost wanted to turn around like 50 times and just not do it um it's very hard hard thing for me to do and to follow through and then talk to all these people it can be uh it was rough for me so um I do apologize that I don't have a video on that um but uh but that, that's why I'm making this video now. Uh, hopefully you guys can learn something from it. I know it's been a little long and maybe a little boring. But um, yeah, just wanted to kind of get that out there. I did want to, to make a video. I brought my camera. I had intended to film. But uh, I just, at the day, once the time got there, I couldn't handle it. I was like, I just have to get through this. <laughs> so um, that's going to do it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.